Hello and welcome to my video. My name is Chuck Holmes. I'm the founder of parttimecommander.com. What you see on the screen right here is my website. What we're going to do in today's video is cover the top five Army leadership styles. I like to share my screen while I make these videos so you can kind of follow along with me. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And if you want to actually see this page as we go through it, it is in the description box below this video. The Army is all about leadership. Whether you are a brand new corporal or a four-star general, you are expected to lead other people. Leadership is really about influence. It's about people respecting you and, and in inspiring people to do what you want them to do. The simple thing that we have going for us in the military is that people are going to listen to us because of our rank. But you really want to take it a step above that. Even though your followers are going to listen to you, you really want them to respect you so that they give you that extra effort so they're loyal, so they work even harder, and you can just be a better team. There are five common Army leadership styles that you can use. And what's really great is you want to take advantage of something called situational leadership, which means you're going to need to change and alter your leadership style based upon the situation you're in, based upon the person that you're working with. It's kind of like being a parent. You can have three kids and they're all completely different. And what works with one kid might not work with another based off personality, temperament, skill, uh, values, upbringing, all those things. So the first one is directing style. And this is probably the most common leadership style in the military. It's basically just where you give an order and, and do it. No questions asked. You're telling them what to do. You're not seeking input from anyone. It's basically, hey, here are the instructions. This is what you need to get done. Make it happen. That is the directing style. And this really focuses on the tasks that must need to be done and a low degree of focus on the relationship you have with the person you're giving the order to. Uh, this is a really effective strategy when you don't have a lot of time to explain the situation or what you need done. Maybe you need Private Snuffy to go clean the latrine. So you give them the order. Hey, Private Snuffy, I need you to clean the latrine and I need it done in the next 45 minutes. Go make it happen. That's a that's a directing style leadership. The next one is the participating style. This really focuses around you and your subordinates. This is really what I tried to do, especially as a commander. I had very good people working for me. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. And this is where you seek their input. You still are the final decision maker. You're not wishy-washy by any means, but you seek their input because you know they bring a lot of value to the table. And you realize that two minds is better than just one mind. Three, four minds is much better than one mind. And if you can get input from other people, that's going to help solve problems. And this is where you really want to focus on the words collaborate, engage. You're trying to get other people's uh, input. Now, you might not do it publicly. You probably do this publicly, uh, privately behind closed doors, and that's okay. But the participating style works very good. And your followers respect and appreciate that you're seeking their input. Once again, you're still the decision maker. You still need to be decisive. But if you can seek their input, it's good. Next, we have the delegating style. And this is where this happens a lot when you have someone really good working for you, if you're that fortunate, and they're just, they're competent, they know how to get the job done. You know you can rely on them. This is where you empower people. This is where you basically let them figure out how it needs to be done because you know they're going to get it done on time and to standard. Next, we have the transformational style. And this helps followers grow and develop into leaders by responding to individual followers' needs, by empowering them, and by aligning the objectives and goals of the individual followers, the leader, the group, and the larger organization. Remember this word, empower and motivate. Those two words are what the transformational style is all about. And finally, we have the transactional style. This is also known as managerial leadership. It's a style where the executive relies on rewards and punishments to achieve optimal job performance from their subordinates. Now, Let's make this video fun. Let's talk about some of the leadership styles I experienced in my 15 plus years in the military. And I've experienced all of these. Maybe I've even done some of these myself, either through ignorance or just the situation called for it. The first one we have is the bully. And the bully tends to be the person who's kind of narcissistic. They are, they have a big ego and they think that they can make themselves look good by making other people look bad. They try to lower other people's self-esteem. They try to make people feel bad. They try to, they're basically on some big ego power trip 
Uh, they really need to be humbled by their boss. Hopefully they will be. But the bully, I wouldn't say it's real common, but it's still out there. And it's usually done by the, by the people with the low self-esteem who are trying to make themselves look good by making other people look bad. Please don't do this one. Uh, the next one is the absent leader. This is like the worst type of leadership style. This is uh, often the person who's a short timer, they're about to retire, or they're about to PC PCS, or they just stop caring altogether. And they're not, they're, they're very seldom are they even around. They pass off everything. They delegate everything to su their subordinates, their position, their responsibilities. It's not a priority to them. They, these people really need to be fired or relief for cause, but it happens. And there's not much worse than having an absent leader. That's when the number two or the subordinates need to step up and do the job of that person, which I hope this never happens to you, but I definitely hope you aren't this person to the people that you lead. Next, we have the, it's all about me. This is probably my least favorite leadership style. When this person talks, everything is about them. Everything in the army exists to serve them. These are really people who either become bullies or they were bullies. They tend to have that narcissistic personality uh, or being like a sociopath. They worship themselves. They think their shit don't stink. They walk on water uh, and they are really difficult to deal with. Next, we have the micromanager. I hope I hope you don't get the micromanager, but they are better than most of the other uh, bad leadership styles we're covering right now. This is the person who really doesn't know how to delegate very well. They think they have the best way for doing everything, and they want to tell their subordinates not only what to do, but how to do it. They don't empower their subordinates to solve their own problems, to do it their own way, to figure things out. They're really involved probably over-involved, and they're robbing their subordinates of their personal development and the workload. And if you're a micromanager, I hope you will stop doing this immediately. Next, we have the go-getter. This is probably my second or was my primary leadership style for quite some time. And a go-getter is someone who's just naturally a high achiever. There are a lot of officers and NCOs who are high achievers. There's a lot who aren't. Typically, the people who, who make the high ranks, the sergeant major, the generals, they're very high achievers. They're, they're go-getters. It's just that, that type A personality on steroids. They want to be the best. They want to be first. Uh, and, and they always want to be at the top. They're the top one percenters. Uh, the problem with this leadership style, it's good because they set high standards and their units are typically very squared away. The problem is these people are often very difficult to work for because they expect you to be a high achiever like them. Now, if you're a high achiever, you love working for another high achiever. If you're just an average worker, you're probably going to have a hard time working for a high achiever because they expect you to do a lot more than you want to do and to do it probably a lot better than you're currently doing it. Finally, we have the pinnacle leaders. These are the people, I call them really the best of the best. They do make it to the top, but what's really good about the pinnacle leader is they care about their people. They have great people skills. They're respected. They're trusted. They can bring people together. They don't divide people. They unify people. They bring out the best in people. They give people purpose, a sense of belonging, like they're part of something better than themselves. And it, if you're fortunate, you might get to work with one or two people like this in your 20-year career if you stay in 20 years. They are rare but they are incredible leaders and they are really what the army is all about. And I wish everyone listening to this video or watching this video, I hope you aspire to become a pinnacle leader because your soldiers deserve it and you deserve it. So what worked for me? Well, I'll tell you a few things that worked for me is I didn't try to be like someone else. I, I did initially as a young officer and that really helped me back because I was trying to model other leaders' behavior and personality style. You really have to figure out how you tick, what, what motivates you, what is your personality, what is your temperament, and how can you leverage that in a way that's going to work for you. That really is where the secret happens. As a leader, though, you have to earn people's respect. You have to be trustworthy. You have to care about other people. You want to encourage people to make mistakes. I encourage everyone I led to make mistakes. Just don't make the same mistake twice learn from the mistake, improve, and be better. You want to empower people? There are a lot of talented people in the military who are underutilized. Let me say that again. There are a lot of talented people in the military that are underutilized. If you empower people, they will step up to the plate. 
I had a leader once tell me, people will rise to the level of expectation that you place on them. So set the expectations high, empower people, and let them show you and prove to you what they're all about. You can also learn from everyone. This, this work for me a lot is I never tried to have the attitude that I was better than someone else because of my rank. If I was a major and someone was a corporal, I could learn just as much from that person as, as I could from someone who is a colonel. So don't let your rank or your duty position go to your head. People are gonna respect you because of those two things. But, well, actually, let me rephrase that. They're gonna respect your duty position. They're gonna respect your rank. But if you want them to respect you as an individual, you have to treat people well. And you can learn from everyone, even if it's what not to do. I learned some of my best leadership lessons from bad bosses because it was what I shouldn't do uh, in the military. So what really makes me proud, and I'll close out the, the today's video with this, is when I was a young lieutenant, especially a second lieutenant, I was a horrible leader. I was very young. I was immature. I was a late bloomer. Um, I had a bad attitude. I didn't really want to be there. And I turned around because of a good leader who saw the best of me, who held me to a higher standard, who inspired me to be great. I went from probably bottom 1% to top 1%, probably within about a year. And I'm very proud of that. So there is hope. If you're not, if you're not performing at the potential that you know you have, you can. You have it in you. Hopefully, you'll have a leader that brings out the best in you and does that. But if you don't, you still have the responsibility to do that for yourself. And more importantly, make sure you do that for your people because everyone has what I call buried potential. Everyone has the level they're working at and they, they have the level they're capable of working at. And that level of potential needs to be tapped into, hopefully by the leader who sees the best in them and, and speaks belief into them and brings out the best in them until they believe in that themselves. So this is my training about Army leadership. Remember, the Army pays you to get things done through other people. That is what the Army is all about. As a leader, it's not about you doing everything. It's about getting the mission done through other people. You are a supervisor. You are a planner. You make it happen. You're, you're providing oversight and feedback, but it's the soldiers and the young NCOs that are making it happen. It's where the rubber meets the road. So final thoughts. Soldiers deserve great leaders. Be the best leader that you can be. No one is born a leader. No one is really born anything. They, If you want to become a leader, you have to choose to be a leader. You're going to be in a leadership role, but to be a leader, you have to choose that you're going to be the leader. You're going to set yourself to a higher standard. You're going to be the best that you can be. Anyone can become a great leader if they choose to by working on their personal development, by working on their attitude, their belief, their passion, their conviction, their technical expertise. And when leading others, you must use different leadership styles with different people and in different situations. This is known as situational leadership. This is where the magic happens. It's being able to refine your leadership style based upon the current situation and the current people that you're working with. I hope you got some value from today's training. Once again, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you check out the links in the description box below this video, you can read this article on my website and find access to other articles I wrote about this topic and many other topics. Thanks for your service. Have a great day.